Good morning and uh, welcome. Uh, and thank you jo for joining us this webinar on emissions modeling with uh, PTV Wissim and Enviver. My name is Axel Leonard and I'm responsible for the Wissim product management and services at PTV. Uh, throughout the webinar you can submit questions via the chat functionality and um, your questions uh, will be answered with, by Mr. Arjan Eich from TNO who is responsible for the development of the Enviver software and by my colleague Lucas Couch. The webinar is scheduled to take about 30 minutes. We will start with um, some basics about emissions modeling with um, Wissim and Enviver. Uh, then I will present the complete workflow in a live demo and uh, since I assume that most of you are more or less familiar with uh, Wissim, uh, this will focus more on the Enviver part and to conclude I will provide some additional information around the software and there will also be some additional time for questions. So let's take a look at the overall idea and the basic workflow. On the one hand uh, we have Wissim, a microscopic traffic simulation tool uh, which is able to simulate uh, multiple modes of transport and especially multiple vehicle types with their respective characteristics. Um, the network is represented in a very detailed level and there are several behavior models inside that allow a realistic time step wise modeling of individual vehicle movements. With uh, Wissim, virtually any network geometry and traffic control and management system can be analyzed uh, with respect to uh, traffic variables such as the travel time. And besides other results, uh, detailed individual vehicle protocols corresponding uh, to the analyzed scenarios can be exported. On the other hand, we have Enviver, which is an emission modeling software produced by TNO in the Netherlands. Enviver calculates um, CO2, NOx and PM10 emissions on an operational level based on high resolution individual vehicle data. And the actual emission models inside Enviver are known as the Versit Plus models. Um, that were derived and are continuously updated based on a large empirical database representing uh, several thousand vehicles. So the obvious idea was to establish a link between the two software programs such that um, simulation results uh, from Wissim can be imported into Enviver to analyze traffic simulation scenarios not only with respect to traffic variables but also with respect to emissions. And uh, since emissions can be assumed to play a more, more and more important role in the analysis of transport systems, uh, this ability um, for an integrated and seamless modeling of traffic operations and emissions um, is particularly valuable. And Weaver um, is distributed by PDV as an add-on module to Wissim. So let's take a look at how it works in, in detail. Um, a joint Wissim and Enviva project will start in Wissim uh, where the traffic simulation model is set up and executed and um, for the later analysis in, in, in Enviva it is particularly important to define the vehicle fleet composition appropriately and to configure the vehicle protocol. So let's have a look at that. So here in Wissim I have a small uh, network with um, a roundabout and some signalized intersections. Um, it is a British network so do not be surprised if vehicles drive on the left side. And uh, to prepare a Wissim model for later emission analysis it is relatively straightforward. Of course you have to take care that the model is set up okay and calibrated but that is of course the case for any simulation model. In Enviver later we will see that uh, Wissim vehicle types are mapped to the Enviver emission classes so the vehicle types, um, vehicle compositions, vehicle inputs and uh, routing needs to be set up carefully and for demonstration purposes um, I will create a new vehicle type um, called Cars North since 
Um, they will enter the network from the north, so I add a new vehicle type here in the vehicle types list. Um, and then I also add this to the vehicle class car and create a new um, vehicle composition called north. And in this I will put in uh, the newly created vehicle type cars north with a desired speed distribution of around 50. Also some heavy good vehicles. Let's say 10%, 90% um, are passenger cars. And finally I have to adapt um, the vehicle input here, um, entering where vehicles enter from the north. Um, so that's this one. So I changed the vehicle composition to be the new created one north. And um, since all other inputs have been defined already, um, we are now ready to run the simulation. But before we do that, we have to make sure that um, the output is configured in a way uh, that Wisdom produces a vehicle protocol file, a so-called FZP file. Uh, with the information needed to calculate the emissions in Enviber. To configure the FCP file, we have to go to Evaluation, Configuration. In the um, tab Direct Output, we have to check the vehicle uh, record and under More, this dialog, so dialog opens and you can configure the attributes that are written out into the protocol file. So you go to attributes. So there are some defaults in there that we remove. So here on the left side you can select what attributes are written in the vehicle protocol. What do we need? The first one is um, the coordinates of the vehicle front per time step uh, representing the vehicle position. Then we need uh, the vehicle number. Um, we need um, a time information which is the simulation second and we need the vehicle speed in there. Um, and then we need some so-called indirect attributes. Um, one is uh, corresponding to the vehicle type of any of the vehicles. Um, the vehicle type number and the vehicle type name and we also want to know in Enviver the gradients um, of the network so we add another indirect attribute. If we go to lane link we can add the attribute gradient uh, so anytime um, vehicle position is recorded it also um, grabs the gradient of the link um, it is driving on and puts it puts it to the vehicle protocol. So um, that's what we need. Please note that the, the uh, order of the attributes does not matter. It is just important that the attributes are included. So we close this. Um, the recommended temporal resolution of uh, the vehicle data in Enviver is one vehicle record per second and since we uh, use a simulation resolution of five uh, steps per second here in this example it is sufficient to record data every fifth uh, time step. So we add that here uh, which will keep the file as, um, as small as possible. So we close the configuration dialog and start the simulation. So let's have a look. Um, if everything is going okay. So possibly or most likely there will be um, lots of emissions locally at these um, signalized intersections but we will see that in Enviver. But I turn off the visualization now to make the simulation um, go faster. Okay. 
Okay, almost done. So we go back to the presentation. So after um, the simulation has finished, the, the FCP file is stored in the working directory. Um, so now we can switch to Enweaver to start the emission analysis. So uh, this is Enweaver. Um, the graphical user interface um, looks rather empty at the moment, but I will guide you through the available views and functionality in the next couple of minutes. So the first thing to do is to create um, a new uh, Enviva project. And um, next thing is um, that you have to import the microsimulation output that we just created. And this is done under uh, traffic, import traffic data, which offers two options. The first is to import traffic data from a text file. Um, and the second one is to import from a database, but since we have exported the simulation output to an FCP file, I choose the first option. Um, so I select um, this FCP file here, and say open. Um, obviously, the time needed to import traffic flow data depends on the number of the recorded uh, traffic flow samples. Typically, Importing traffic data requires a couple of seconds, but for larger networks and or longer analysis periods, uh, it can take several minutes uh, to load and pre-process the simulation data. So now we can um, provide some base information uh, about the project in this window. So let's name it uh, London Tests um, and then close this window and before we continue, we save um, this project. Okay. So once um, a data set from uh, Visim uh, has been imported into Enviver, um, the vehicle types defined in Visim must be linked to uh, vehicle emission classes in Enviver. And this is done in the um, vehicle class assignment window, which is shown here, and uh, which can be opened um, with this uh, button here in the toolbar. In um, the leftmost um, columns, uh, you can see um, the vehicle type uh, number and the name as specified in Visim. And you can see also the uh, vehicle type that we just created, cars uh, north. Uh, so this is also available. In the third column, you can assign an Enviver or Versit uh, emission class to every uh, Visim vehicle type. And here you can um, either select one of the predefined emission classes uh, provided with the software or define and use a custom vehicle emission class. But let's first look at the predefined uh, classes. So um, the predefined emission classes are based on the average Dutch uh, fleet composition um, and there are models for uh, four vehicle categories, uh, the light duty vehicles, uh, mainly passenger cars, uh, buses, heavy duty uh, vehicles uh, of medium size and heavy duty vehicles um, that are large and heavy. And for all of them, except for buses, um, there are separate models for urban areas, the city models, and for rural areas, the so-called highway models. Uh, the difference between uh, the city and the highway models um, are mainly caused by different fleet compositions in these areas. Um, and less cold starts per travel distance um, um, on the highways. Um, so for example, uh, the fleet in an urban area contains a higher proportion of older cars and, and petrol cars uh, compared to the, the rural and highway areas. So altogether, there are seven um, emission models. And uh, since uh, vehicle fleet changes over time, uh, these are updated by TNO every year. And um, if you're interested uh, in the Versit model itself, um, there's good reading available uh, on the web. Uh, for example, a paper by Lichtering and De Lang uh, from 2009. 
So let's get back to Enviver and uh, the vehicle class assignment. So um, in this uh, third column you can assign uh, either one of the predefined classes which are listed here and also shown here. Um, um, or a customized class uh, which I will describe in a minute but that's finished uh, with this table first. Um, so all simulated entities um, with the emission class set to none, like shown here, uh, will be excluded from the emission calculations uh, which should be the case for pedestrians and cyclists uh, typically um, if you have any in the simulation model. Um, the av availability of um, the emission models um, in this listing here um, depends on the selected error. Error is shown here. Uh, it indicates uh, the analysis year. So in this case, um, it is the year 2013. And so let's remove this here first. Um, and if you go further to the right, in the rightmost right most columns, um, the um, they show the maximum speed for the different uh, vehicle types um, simulated in VISIM and the maximum speeds uh, for which the respective Enviver emission models um, are defined. So this um, allows um, a quick check if all traffic data can be handled appropriately if uh, this value here is smaller than this. Um, so as you can see, um, for buses, um, heavy good vehicles and uh, normal cars, um, we already assigned um, predefined emission models, um, but we assumed um, in Visim already that there are some vehicles whose emission behavior is different and hence uh, we want to define, let's say, a customized emission model. So, and this is a really a very important functionality since the assumption of a typical Dutch fleet may not hold true in many countries. So. Um, Let's have a look how to define customized um, emission models that, that, that can supplement or replace the predefined models. Customized um, models can be created in a dialog which can be opened down here with this button. So let's remove the existing one. So this is um, the dialog and on the left side you can add, uh, remove um, or duplicate emission classes. So I will add a new one and call it um, Cars uh, North um, and since we want to use it uh, for the analysis here 2013 uh, we set the error here accordingly and it will become available in the vehicle class assignment window that I showed earlier. It is an urban uh, scenario which means that the cold start component is taken into account and the vehicle type is car, so we select light duty here and in the remainder of this window you can specify vehicle characteristics that determine um, the emissions. Um, the first is uh, the distribution of fuel type and Weaver can take into account um, petrol, diesel, uh, liquid, uh, liquefied petroleum gas, uh, compressed natural gas and electric uh, light duty vehicles. For heavy duty and buses um, only diesel and compressed natural gas uh, should be non-zero since there are no underlying emission models available for the other fuel types but we have uh, light duty vehicles here anyway. So let's say um, that 10% um, of these uh, vehicles um, are electric cars so we enter 10% here and lock this. Um, there is uh, no gas, so we put both of them to zero, we have 20% diesel and the remaining 70% are petrol engines and the resulting um, fuel distribution is shown in the pie chart to the right of the parameter fields here. Another important factor is the uh, distribution of vehicle age. In Enviver, um, the age distribution is assumed to be um, a three-piece uh, linear function uh, where the user can define uh, three parameters. The first is uh, the percentage of vehicles uh, that are younger than one year. The second is the average vehicle age and the third is the average exit age. And uh, the graph on the right side shows the distribution um, 
that results uh, from the parameters selected on the left side. So let's say um, our new fleet um, has a lot of uh, new cars, um, so 10% of them are younger than one year. Um, so this, you, you can get uh, warnings here sometimes, uh, that's because uh, the function uh, is in a way overdetermined, so it is possible to create invalid function functions, which the software tells you, um, but you can easily repair that by adding appropriate numbers here. So let's say the average vehicle age is seven years and uh, the average exit age is 12 years. And further down in this dialog, um, here you can define uh, the dates when the different uh, Euro emission standards have been introduced. So the regular dates, um, so the official dates uh, here, uh, they can be used in most European countries, uh, but the introduction, the actual introduction dates can be changed uh, for the model to replicate the situation in the country looked at. Um, so. Uh, if emission standards different from the Euro scheme are applied, the user um, can map um, the respective standards to the Euro norm manually and um, set the introduction dates accordingly. Uh, there are tables published on the web that compile worldwide emission regulations uh, and these can be consulted to align the Euro scheme uh, shown here to the other existing schemes. Um, so the introduction date together with um, the age distribution uh, and the defined error um, um, results basically in this um, in, in a distribution of vehicles um, that fall under respective emission standards shown here and this distribution that results from, from that is shown in this pie chart here. And further down here, um, average uh, regional CO2 emission uh, factors or numbers can be provided to correct the overall average emissions in the network based on a known average emission for a region or a country. And these um, are typically uh, published and known. Uh, and if you have questions how this works in detail, uh, you can uh, submit these questions and Ayan uh, will be happy to answer your questions in the chat or by following up. So, uh, and once we have defined our new vehicle uh, subfleet, we can uh, save it and leave the dialog. And now we can assign this new emission class that we just created to this vehicle type car north in the vehicle class assignment window, like shown here. So now since we have set up the vehicle emission classes, uh, we can calculate and analyze the emissions. Uh, note that Enviver itself is a desktop application, but the emission models are hosted um, on a server at TNO, uh, such that the um, emission models can be updated uh, easily. So you need to have an internet connection while you are doing the emission calculations, uh, but once uh, done that, you can save, of course, the results uh, for, for further analysis uh, locally. So the emission calculation itself uh, is initiated by hitting the sum button in the toolbar. Um, so now the results can be analyzed and um, exported in different formats. Um, so this first view here, um, it appears automatically after the emission calculation is initiated, is the accumulated emission values per emission type. Um, these are shown in the uh, total tab in the results window and the values shown here are the total um, emission and also the average emission per hour uh, and the average emission uh, per driven kilometer for um, the different emission types. The classes tab shows calculated emission values accumulated per um, emission class. Uh, 
and uh, from within this uh, results window you can create um, a report uh, which can be uh, printed or saved as a PDF. And you can also export um, emissions data into a text file um, for further analysis. And you can also export the results in a binary format, which can be read into Enviver and the Enviver viewer. Enviver viewer, um, it is um, a freely distributable tool that allows to analyze emission data created with Enviver. So um, Enviver calculates the emitted emissions for every single vehicle in a network per second. And since the locations of the vehicles are known, uh, the emissions are known for every second on every position in the network. And based on this information, detailed emission maps can be produced. The map window uh, is opened uh, with this button here in the toolbar. Um, by default, the, the cell size is 25 by 25 meters, uh, which is uh, more suitable for larger networks. So we uh, change that to be 5 by 5 meters. On the left uh, side, uh, you can navigate the map and uh, define its uh, visual appearance. And in the toolbar at the top, you can select the information to be displayed. Um, for example, we select uh, that we want to see emission concentration in microgram per cu cubic meter. Okay, like that, and then we're interested not in CO2 maybe, but in NOx. We get the resulting um, plots here. Other options um, for the map display um, are, for example, also more traffic-related information, such as the average speed. The surrounding conditions. Um, can be defined as well. So, um, for example, um, if the road network is in open terrain, uh, this will result in a more dispersed um, emission map, which we see in a minute, or hopefully not in a minute, but in a second. Um, so you can see it's a more dispersed, um, or if you have uh, an urban setting with uh, street canyons, um, the air quality is affected more locally. But please note that the underlying dispersion models um, are rather basic uh, and uh, that Enviver primarily is an emission and not a dispersion model. Uh, if you want, you can also interpolate um, the cell-wise um, emission data uh, to get a smoother image. So if you are um, not interested in the emissions in the whole area, but in a sub-area of the network, you can define an analysis region. Um, to do that, simply click on the selection tool up here on the upper left and drag a rectangle to define uh, the area. For example, this um, intersection up here and then hit apply and um, if the emissions are recalculated um, the aggregated results shown um, in the table and the map um, are taking only this selected area into account. So we go back to the whole thing we calculate. Okay, so um, this was the emission part. Um, in addition to the emission models, uh, Enviva also offers functionality to analyze uh, vehicle dynamics, uh, more or less for information purposes. So one way to look at these dynamics um, is the speed acceleration plot, which can be opened uh, with this button in the toolbar. Um, so in this plot, the acceleration uh, 
is displayed as a function of speed uh, for every recorded data sample and this allows uh, um, to quickly assess whether the acceleration values fall into a plausible range. And another option is to look at individual vehicle traje tra trajectories uh, which can be accessed here. Um, so the panel in this window on the left side um, shows a list of all available uh, vehicle trips and um, also the status of each trip. Uh, status indicates uh, whether a trip could be, could be evaluated or if there was a reason to exclude it from, uh, to exclude a certain trip, for example because there were not enough uh, samples for a particular trip and um, the corresponding diagrams uh, on the right side correspond to the selected trip here and it shows or they show uh, vehicle information um, over the trip time uh, for the selected trip and you can display for example um, the speed as shown here or the acceleration um, or the travel distance and at the moment it's um, a smooth uh, variant but you can also uh, show it in a discrete uh, manner as reported in the FCP file by Visim. So um, uh, this concludes the Enviver live demo and uh, we will now provide some further information related to the software. Of course you can uh, continue to submit questions uh, regarding the software via the chat. So en Enviver is available in two editions. Uh, the first more basic one is the one that you just saw which is called uh, the Pro edition. And the other one um, is called Enterprise Edition and it comes with um, some additional functionality such as for example um, batch processing um, which allows the consecutive um, processing, allows the consecutive of, processing um, of multiple of, FCP, uh, multiple files. FCP files and um, GIS output of emissions and air quality. Um, it has an analysis tool that allows the analysis of multiple scenario or simulation uh, scenarios or multiple simulation runs at a time and the comparison of scenarios within the software in Weaver and um, uh, selected time analysis allows the selection of a specific uh, time span of the total simulated, simulated time. So the vehicle emissions uh, in this specific uh, time selection can be calculated and displayed in the network. So this can be useful for detailed analysis um, in long simulations. Uh, this was a webinar focusing on emissions modeling with uh, Visim and Enviver, but we have uh, more webinars coming up. Uh, the next webinar focusing on Visim will be on the simulation of active traffic management and will be held on March 18th. And there are many more webinars on the various um, PDV vision products and information about the topics and dates can be found on our website. And on our website also further information about the products can be found as well as information on training courses and uh, trial versions um, of the software tools. And finally I would like to mention a very uh, interesting event uh, that is coming up. Um, the Shaping Transportation Conference and International PTV Vision User Group Meeting. This will be a three-day event held at the end of May in Berlin uh, and it's featuring high-level strategic transport related talks and discussions as well as real-world project presentations and technical workshops uh, showcasing the latest developments in PTV Vision software. So I hope uh, to see you there. Um, this concludes the webinar. Uh, we will be around in the chat for another uh, couple of minutes to answer your questions. Uh, so thank you all for attending. Goodbye.